Welcome to Woodworking with me, Mitch Peacock. Now I'm in my little machine shop which is where I store a lot of my leftover lumber. It's not ideal but it is dry and it's a relatively low humidity. So if I take a piece of wood this sort of size into the house um, it could be ready to work with in just a couple of weeks. And now is really a good time to tell you about um, acclimatising wood for your woodworking projects. Trees contain an awful lot of water, no matter what the season. About half of it is cellular water and half is free water. When the tree is cut down or it dies, the free water drains away very quickly, but it's still leaving a moisture content of around 45-50%. to 50%. Processing wood, we stack it and air dry it or kiln dry it, which will remove a lot more of the water, perhaps bring it down to somewhere between 10 and 15 percent. In a modern home wood balances out at about 8 to 10 percent moisture content. As wood dries out it shrinks both in its width and its thickness and it also tends to warp a bit. If we build furniture with wood that has a moisture content of around 12 percent and then move it into a house where its moisture content lowers to 8 percent all the components are going to change shape and that piece of furniture is going to fail. And that's why we acclimatise wood to a household environment before we build furniture. Now of course the reason I'm out here is to find some wood to make our little table. So let's have a look and see what I've got. Quite a bit of sapili up to about three quarters of an inch. A little bit of walnut, some spalted beech, pine down here, some more beech, long piece of spalted beech some Iroko, long length of Iroko there, rough cherry bores back there that I actually cut down a couple of years ago I think, so I should be making something from them pretty soon. Underneath all that quite a bit more Iroko. So you got a lot of wood there from pallets and some chunks of oak, some Maranti. I've decided to go with two tables to begin with. The first one will be made from oak I've bought some in from the machine shop, I also had some in the workshop, uh, we'll take a look at that in a moment. And the second table is going to be made from this pallet wood. Now thanks to everyone who gave their opinion as to what I should make these tables out of. There was some demand for pallet wood, so I will be doing one of those. And um, I don't actually have any pallets to take apart, and one of the questions that arose was how do I disassemble pallets? Well I'll, I'll show you a proper demonstration of that. Uh, sometime when I get one in the workshop, but for now, in case you're stuck, I'll just give you a quick demonstration. So let's first of all mock up a pallet and I can show you how I would take one apart. So let's assume that's a bottom slat, a couple of blocks, and that's a top slat. Now you can go at that with a wrecking bar, a uh, large hammer, circular saw, jigsaw. But I find a much easier way and less destructive to the wood is to use a hardwood block and a couple of hardwood wedges. I place the block next to one of the, the blocking pieces in the pallet and the two wedges, one on top of the other, like so. And you see if I push those against each other this space here widens up. So how I'm going to remove this is to put the wedges in and then push each wedge in the opposite direction and that will force the um, slat off the block. It really is as simple as that and it causes less destruction than other methods because when you're pushing the wedges together the force that's applied is even right across both sides of the slat. Whereas if you use a wrecking bar and you lever then you're pushing up hard on one side of the slat and not the other and that's when you tend to get slats breaking. Let me talk you through the tools I think I'm going to be using. First of all we're going to need to cut up our lumber and because most people get into woodworking use a basic combination saw I've dug one out and that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to also need some chisels. Again, this is a basic set, but sharpened well, prepared well, they do an excellent job. I'm going to need to drill some holes. 
So I've got a brace and some bits. Turning to planes, I've got my record 60.5 low angle block plane and I've replaced the hock blade that I normally have in there with the standard record blade. I have my Axminster Rider number 4 bench plane. I've got the marking knife that I showed how to make in an earlier video. I'm actually using an old wooden extendable rule, a mortise gauge, a marking gauge, my homemade winding sticks. I've also got a pencil, a silver line engineer's tri square, and a Varco bevel gauge. I think that's probably all we're going to need, but uh, if anything else crops up, I'll cover it at the time. Now you've probably realised that I don't have any power tools here, and that's because I'm going to build both these tables fully unplugged. Now there's no reason at all why you can't use power tools, I'm just doing it because I'm going to enjoy it. Now I just want to talk to you a moment about unplugged boring. And that's not watching me on a tablet by the way, that's uh, drilling holes without power. I'm just going to mention three different types of boring tools. I think probably the easiest are the gimlets. Um, these are wire gimlets because of the, the way the handle's formed. I uh, also get them with boxwood handles and plastic handles. Basically it's a drill bit with a little worm or screw on the end there. And you start the screw off in the piece of wood. The screw then pulls the rest of the drill through. They're very easy to use and very controllable. And they come in a wide range of sizes. The next one is the egg beater style drill. This one is, uh, is a keyless chuck. That takes the standard twist drill bits, so you can still get bits for them very cheaply. And finally we have the brace. Brace is used with various bits, coming from the, the smaller end up to larger, and you get larger than that. You can get different bits for these braces as well. This one's like a force and a bit, it's just for shallow, larger holes. You can get screwdriver bits for them. And here's a countersink bit. If you're buying a brace, one thing to look out for is the throw, which is basically the distance from the handle, or the power handle, through to the, the line that the drill bit's in. And it's awkward to show you with these, but one is about an inch wider throw than the other one. Obviously, the wider the throw, the more power you can get into the cut. But it also means you need a bigger circle, and sometimes you just don't have the space. That's just a very brief look. Uh, there is an excellent video online by someone. If I can find the link, I'll leave it for you. Now, a second table is going to be built out of this oak. Uh, I know this was only felled two years ago, so there's a possibility it may still have a rather high moisture content. To hasten any drying, I'm going to rough cut components out of this straight away and then move those into the house. When I rough cut, I cut the components a little bit larger than their finished size. What it does, it removes a lot of the waste, which has obviously got water in it. Uh, it increases the relative surface area to volume, which allows what's left to dry out that little bit quicker. Now looking at the moisture content of this with the meter, I've got a piece of oak that always stays in the house, so that's my reference. That's reading 12%. I look at this piece, 13, occasionally flashing up to 14, so it's quite a bit more, a couple of percent. Uh, hopefully that will dry out quick enough to do this project, if it doesn't we may have to delay that a little bit. After measuring up it looks like I might be able to get four legs and the top out of this one plank. And then this small piece is plenty big enough to make up the two cross rails. I'll rough cut this and try and get it dried out for next time. Meanwhile a SketchUp model is available free of charge on my website so you can take off measurements and get your timber ready for next time. Cheerio! Please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe and follow me on social media for extra photos and videos from the workshop. Cheerio!